what I really want to dive into is you mentioned to me in our pre-interview that uh, the squiggles have been a pretty, pretty dramatic over the decade that you've been doing this. Um, and I really want to, in this episode, I want to help other entrepreneurs to understand how to deal with adversity. And you've had a lot of it. Uh, I know there was a bankruptcy. I know your home at one point, a week after you built it or something, I think burned completely to the ground. And I'm sure there's a whole bunch of stuff that we didn't even get to in the pre-interview. So let's talk about the, um, now was the bankruptcy during the the 10 year window that you were running this business or was that, you know, kind of before this happened? Just prior, just prior, just prior. A couple of years okay. before. Yeah. So, so let's start there because I think that's you know bankruptcy. My dad went bankrupt not once but twice, and and I know it was emotionally devastating for him, and it, and it I think it really took away a lot of his confidence to ever really kind of go and try hard because he was never particularly successful in his career after that or in business. Mm-hmm. So, talk to me a bit about you know, how the bankruptcy happened is not too terribly important. If you want to share that, that's great, but that's not really what I want to get into. It's, it's what did you do in your head? And then, and then how did you dig yourself out of that hole and then go on to start, you know, your company and, and ultimately become successful? Yeah. And I'm, I am an open book, so I don't mind talking about it at all. Um, so in, in 2007, I was a very su- successful sports chiropractor, mate. uh, great income, uh, referral based practice was rocking and rolling, you know, pretty low stress and, uh, thinking the grass is always greener, looking around, seeing a lot of my friends were paper millionaires from real estate. And mm-hmm. so I decided that it would be a good idea to, uh, get in deeply into real, the real estate game at that time and bought several spec homes, um, all under construction. And what year yeah. was this? 2007. Okay. Yeah. So we all hope know what happened uh, yeah. starting basically in late 2007 into 2009, and the the market fell apart, and it was you know challenging time. I had months where I had fifty thousand dollars coming in in a month, with seventy going out, and uh, you can mm-hmm. only sustain that for so long. So I, I did make the very challenging decision uh, to file for for bankruptcy, and I mean it was the lowest part point in my life. Uh, you know, I'm here, I'm in my mid thirties. I've got nine years of college education. I'm a quarter million dollars in, in debt from school. Um, but I've got a successful practice. I've got a lot of things going for me and to, you know, be in that position where I did what I did. And then I'm waking up, looking in the mirror, like, how did you screw this up? I mean, it was just beyond me and mm-hmm. I could see what your dad went through. I mean, it's, um, it's a huge, major, major, major blow to the ego, but it was exactly what I needed. I know that in, in retrospect, it's what I needed to get to where I'm at today. I, you know, what changed during that period of time? Well, you know, I'm big on this, this kind of cycle that I, I believe really starts out around like seven or eight years old when for the first seven years of our life, we know now that we're basically in download mode and just getting whatever our worldview is, we're downloading it typically from our parents. And we don't really start making rational decisions till about eight years old. Well, you know, whatever belief system it, we're, we're, we have at our foundation, that starts to form how we think about things, our thoughts, our thoughts dictate our words, our words, our actions, and our actions over time equal results. And those results reinforce a belief system. So around and around we go. That's why when people get stuck in, you know, like a scarcity mindset or negativity or, um, you know, the sky is always falling, it's the law of attraction. And it's that cycle that's creating a spiral. So I was very much in a negative spiral in that period of time. And I realized that, you know, I had approached things a certain way. And I was always more, a little bit more of a risk taker, but I had approached things a certain way up to that point in my life. And certain areas were doing really well and other areas were not doing well, especially financially. Um, and so I started thinking about this cycle and how can I break the cycle? It's, it, you know, a lot of self-help people say, oh, you need to like think differently in that. I, I just don't find that it's possible to think, just think differently without having 
you know, anything to lean back on any mm-hmm. experience that helps, you know, make those type of changes. So what I did start doing is that I controlled this part of the cycle that I could control, which was my, my, my words and my actions. Right. So I started talking differently. I started realizing that I was using in my communication style, a lot of negations, a lot of soft talk, a lot of scarcity talk, and really catching myself around that. I started to act differently. Um, so that was the first time I started developing a morning routine, you know, getting up even earlier, doing Wim Hof breathing, keeping my body in ketosis, doing yoga, going for a morning walk, doing my morning prayers, um, some self affirmations, filling out the five minute journal, your you know appreciation journal, three things you're grateful for, three things that'll help make today great, one self affirmation. And so realizing that my morning trajectory would dictate my daily trajectory, my daily, my weekly, my weekly, my monthly, and then throughout the year that things over time would change because we always overestimate what we can do in the short term and underestimate what we can do in the long Mm -hmm. term. So I knew consistency over time was the key and staying consistent with that routine and really starting to see the results through the law of attraction, those results had an impact on my beliefs. And I realized like, this isn't just like this woo woo crazy stuff. Like this stuff actually works if you practice it long enough. And that's where most people fail is they're just not giving things enough time, right? Enough time to play out. Like any of us could be richer than Jeff Bezos. If we're given enough time, if we live a thousand years, you know, and are investing, we'll be richer than Bezos. Right. So, um, it, that was the, that's how, you know that's basically how I turned it around. Not that it was easy; it was not a straight line, but that was the process. Okay, so the takeaway there for anyone who's listening, who is maybe experiencing some severe or even minor, but we'll call it medium to severe adversity in their lives right now, is to start first of all changing the language that they're using. Is that where they would start? Okay, so the very, very beginning, um, that's a good question because uh, let me back up one step. The very beginning is you have to answer a fundamental question. And this is anywhere you're hitting a glass ceiling in any aspect of your life, you're answering this question wrong. And the question is, am I a victim? You know, am I a victim? Because as soon as you answer yes to that, that question, you put on the cuffs. It's a new form of slavery. And we see it playing out all around us during COVID and beyond. Yeah. Right? Am I a victim? And if it's yes, then it's out of my control. There's nothing I can do about it. I am passive cause and effect, which is total BS. It's not cause and effect. It never has been. Not for human beings. It's cause plus reaction equals effect. Right? We have the ability to choose. So first, you got to really get into your own psychology and say, okay, recognize that I'm being a victim in this particular area of my life. And it is creating beliefs, thoughts, words, actions that are ending in a result that I'm not happy with. So recognizing, you know, deconstructing it and then work on your language and your actions. So it's, I I was just talking with a friend of mine who's a personal trainer for 20 years and once in a while he'll get these clients and, you know, they're coming in, they're paying the money and everything, but they're just always bitching. I'm not getting the results. I'm not getting the results. And I told him, John, you tell these people, get your butt out of bed every morning at 5 a.m., you know, go for a walk, modify the diet like you tell them to, and never miss a workout. Guess what's going to happen after 12 months? Their bad genetics or whatever excuse, whatever victim excuse they're using doesn't matter because they will get results. You know, it's calories in minus calories out. Yeah. It's a simple formula. Um, but they miss, they're the people that miss the workouts and cheat on the diet and, you know, hit the snooze bar five times. So, you know, until we break that victim cycle, we will never make progress in any aspect of our lives. <laughs> This is this same piece of advice was given to me many, many years ago by my first mentor and investor in my first company, a fellow by the name of John Block. And and I don't think John regularly listens to my podcast, but if he has a shout out to John, he said to me, I live by one. and, And he's a very, very wealthy, successful man. And he said, I Trent, I live by one rule more than anything. And that is this, no matter what happens in my life, I'm responsible. And if people will take a moment and break that down, they can say, well, you know, I got a really crappy boss. Yeah, but you chose to work there. Sure. 
you know, oh, I'm, I got a really crappy spouse. Yeah, but you chose to marry them. Yep. Or I got really, uh, I, you know, I'm, I, 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 I'm not making up money or I'm not happy with my career yet, but you chose that career or, or your lack of choice of a career put you into the job. Yeah. Or you're you choosing have. to stay there. Yeah. And you're choosing to stay there. And, yeah. and that is, it's so hard for people who are so far down in that victim space to ever get their head out of it, to realize that, that they're causing most of their own problems. Cause it's so much easier to just blame somebody else. So much easier. And at every level of the game that we're in, every level, it's peeking its head around the corner and, and trying to suck you in. I found myself yeah. just the other day talking about, you know, yeah, my, my house burned down the, in the fires in August. Uh, you know, for 17 years, we'd been working on this property and, you know, putting literally every spare penny that I had saved up and, and, and everything, all my spare time into this property, developing it off the grid, solar, you know, had my parents living there, multi-generational compound, fruit trees, chickens, the whole works. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and the whole thing, you know, burned down and, and, uh, it was, it would, it was easy to kind of catch myself into the, like, you know, why, you know, why me? Like, oh, you yeah. know, this isn't fair. And, and all, and, but even thinking that is like, well, wait a second. You know, if I truly believe the dogma, the dog food that I've been feeding myself, then, you know, this is an opportunity. You know, it's an opportunity for growth. It's what you needed. You may not understand why you need it right now, but that's okay. I mean, less than 12 months later, I now understand why I needed that. I was mm -hmm. assigning permanence to material things, which by definition is a fallacy. But all material things by definition have a beginning and an end. They, you know, they don't last forever. And the very things that sometimes I would discount are the things that do last forever. Our thoughts, our words, our actions. You can never unthink something once you think it. You can never unsay something or undo yeah. something once you've done it. So, um, you know, I feel like where society is going and where the mindset is going is, is it flips those two. Like, well, you can, you know, say whatever you want on the internet and you can you know, think whatever you want. You can do whatever you want as long as you don't get caught. Um, but, uh, you know, put you know, all your money into this kind of stuff because this is stuff that's important and it's the exact opposite. It's the exact opposite.